Uh, hello and welcome to another video in the series um, which attempts to answer uh, the most frequently asked questions uh, about Fantasy Crown's uh, Unity. Uh, in this one we're going to be looking at using the uh, line of sight feature. Uh, we're not going to be looking at how you uh, create the line of sight um, but just how you uh, operate it uh, during uh, a game. Uh, so we've got a Dungeon Master screen here, we've got a player connected. Uh, so we need to get a map, um, so we'll just use one of the maps from uh, Lost Minds of Phandelver. Um And uh, we're going to, uh, first of all, need to uh, get the characters, uh, or the character in this case, uh, onto the map. So the usual way, we open up the combat tracker, uh, Dragon uh, Duthan here, and then we're going to place him uh, on the map, just at the entrance to the castle. Um, and we're not going to enable the line of sight, uh, so we need to uh, unlock the map, make sure that we've got the play button selected and that we're on this uh, menu here, and then we just enable the line of sight uh, using this toggle. Uh, and when we press it we can see that on the Dungeon Master screen the uh, map has gone a darker colour. Uh, we can lock up the map again, we don't need it. Oh, we don't need that menu. And we can now share the map with our player. Um, and if we have a look at the uh, player's screen, uh, we can see uh, what the player actually sees here. Um, you can see that uh, the line of sight has blocked um, everything uh, from uh, this area around uh, here. Uh, the player can simply see uh, the little bit behind and they can see this there's a platform here uh, but they can't see what's uh, beyond the platform. Um, now we can uh, uh, the players can now move around. Um, to move uh, you can do what you did in classic which is to grab the token and uh, just um, move it around with the uh, mouse. Uh, or you can use the uh, arrow keys uh, to move the token up, down, left and right. Um, or uh, if you've got the uh, numlock uh, disengaged, then you can use the numlock keys. And the advantage of using the numlock keys is that you can also uh, move the character uh, diagonally as well as in the cardinal uh, points of the uh, compass. Uh, so up to you which one uh, you use. Uh, but the numlock uh, gives you uh, more options. Now as you can see whilst we're moving the character around here then different bits of the uh, map are being revealed. Uh, as we move the character up and down here we can see uh, beyond uh, the staircase here but we still can't see beyond the walls uh, of the castle. Um, so if we move uh, forward now and we climb the stairs and once we get to the top of the stairs, we can now see um, that there is another area revealed. We can see the door here, and we can see uh, a room beyond. And if we continue uh, moving in, uh, then more of the map will be revealed to the player. Uh, now in this room here, there's a couple of features uh, which are uh, interesting. Um, the first is that the players can't see beyond this uh, pile of rubble here. They can see into the pile of rubble, they can see that there's a pile of rubble there, but they can't see beyond it. And they can also see uh, that there are several doors in this room. Now if we deal with the rubble first of all, if the player comes down here and uh, moves into uh, this pile of rubble, then once they've moved into it, uh, they can now see both into uh, and out of uh, the rubble in both directions. So this room here is lit up and the area beyond this pile of rubble is also lit up because they're basically standing on the top of the pile and they can see uh, beyond the pile uh, in both directions. And if we continue moving them further forward uh, you'll see that once they get beyond the pile of rubble then they can no longer see into the room uh, be that they uh, just left because this pile is now blocking again. So this kind of uh, feature here, these terrain features here, uh, essentially they don't um, block movement, but they do block the line of sight depending on where you are uh, in the pile of rubble. So if we move back again, 
we can see that we're now seeing both rooms and then if we continue moving into this room then the previous room gets uh, darker again. It's still lit up showing that we've explored this area um, but it, it's a bit darker than the room that we're actually in. So not only do the walls here uh, and the doors uh, block the line of sight but they also block the player's movement. So if the player uh, comes over to this door here and tries to get through the door um, you can't see this but I'm pressing the key uh, in that direction but I can't uh, actually proceed uh, through that door and the same thing applies through any of these doors I can try and go through them but I can't because it's blocking the movement and obviously the walls are blocking movement as well however if the door is unlocked then the players can open the door so if the player mouses over and uh, let's zoom in a little bit it might be clearer um, if the player mouses over this door here you can see that it's closed and if the player clicks on the door just on this little symbol here then the door opens and the token can now move through into the next room so any door which is open uh, the players can uh, open the door um, but if the dungeon master uh, wants to lock a door if for example they don't want or the door is just simply locked um, if uh, for example uh, this door here is locked then the dungeon master can lock the door by holding down the shift key and clicking uh, on the door and you'll see that there is now a lock symbol on that door switch back to the player's view um, and if the player now tries to uh, get through that door it's closed and if they mouse over it and try and open it you'll see the little lock symbol uh, flashes up to say that this is a locked door uh, and the players uh, can't open it uh, until they've found a key or found some method of opening the door and the DM uh, once they have achieved whatever it is to get this door open um, the DM can just simply hold down the shift key again, click on the door and once again the door is now uh, unlocked and the players are now able to uh, open the door and proceed. Uh, if we switch back to the uh, DM screen and if we just have a look at this pile of rubble here we can see the pile of rubble lights up when the DM mouses over it and it also has a closed symbol on it. Um, so if the DM decided that this pile of rubble didn't actually block line of sight, maybe it's only a couple of feet high, so it might be difficult terrain, but it's not necessarily high enough that it would prevent a token from seeing into this room, then they can simply open um, this piece of terrain by uh, clicking on it, and uh, the terrain then becomes open. And if we uh, go back to our uh, player view, and uh, move our player down there we can see now that it's no longer this area is no longer blocking the line of sight into this room so it doesn't matter where we are uh, on that uh, pile of rubble we can still see into uh, both rooms even if we have gone over the edge uh, of the pile of rubble so it's up to the DM uh, whether or not uh, these features actually block line of sight uh, or not so there's another couple of things to be aware of um, when you're the uh, DM. Uh, the first thing is that there are no restrictions on the DM as far as moving tokens through walls or doors are. So uh, as the DM I can um, move this token and I can just move it straight through anything, doors, walls, whatever. I, you know, the doors and walls don't block uh, the movement for the dungeon master. Uh, however, if the dungeon master, if for example um, the players had a teleporter or something like that and wanted to move, uh, or you wanted to move the players from this area down here to the area up to the north here, um, then you can do so uh, if you hold down the shift key, grab the token, and then uh, drop it where you want it. And as you can see, when we did that, by holding down shift, none of the areas, none of the line of sight, uh, or none of the map was revealed between where we started and where we finished. Uh, if we uh, just go back to the uh, player's view, um, we can see that 
nothing has been revealed in the centre of the map here. Uh, the players are now in this room here. They were here, but nothing in between uh, has been revealed. So holding down shift, um, the, or by holding down shift, the DM can move tokens around without revealing a uh, line of sight uh, where the players haven't yet been. Um, so there's one other uh, final thing that we could look at, and that is the interaction with line of sight with the uh, mask. If we uh, unlock our map again, we can see uh, the mask symbol up here. Uh, if we can click on that, and then we can... Um, show uh, or hide uh, the area and we've got this button here which is uh, enabling the mask so if we enable the mask you can see now that the uh, map has gone even darker uh, to show that the mask is on and if we look at the uh, player screen um, everything's completely black um, so the mask uh, in uh, unity works in the same way as it does in classic and it can be used in conjunction uh, with the uh, line of sight feature. So if we wanted to reveal an area, make sure that we've got this reveal area button and then we can do the same as we can do in classic which is just to drag and then uh, open up uh, the area and that reveals or cuts a hole uh, in the mask. If we look at the player's view now they can see the room uh, that they're in. Um, you can also of course uh, hold down the uh, shift key and um, Sorry, this yeah, it, it, it is the shift key. No, it's the I've changed it. See, it's the seat. It's the alt key. Uh, you can uh, reveal a, an irregular area of the map by holding down alt and then just uh, drawing around the area that you uh, want to reveal. Um, so we've revealed that area beyond the door. But if we look at the player's uh, view. The players uh, can't see the area beyond the door because the line of sight, the walls there and the two doors uh, in that room are blocking the line of sight. Um, but when the uh, uh, token, uh, sorry, back to the player screen, uh, when the uh, players uh, move and open the door, then they'll be able to see uh, part of the area that uh, was revealed. So when we open that door there we can see that they don't really see very much and you'll also notice that the movement is also being blocked uh, by the mask so the mask also blocks movement uh, as well as uh, it uh, limits the sight if we go back to our DM map again um, and reveal another area and we back to our players map we can see now that the uh, players uh, are now able to uh, move into the area that we've cleared but the bit that we haven't, this bit up here um, is still not clear and the movement is now blocked again uh, so you can use the uh, line of sight feature with the mask uh, to uh, limit the uh, length of the line of sight if you wanted to um, but the um, uh, the, the mask is entirely uh, optional, uh, it isn't uh, required in uh, Unity in the same way as it is in Classic. Um, well, okay, I think we've uh, covered everything he uh, here, uh, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers for now.